cutie flikes spy. Peep a run. Hello cuties! Hello, hello! How are you guys? I hope you are doing very well. I hope the uh, audio isn't doing that weird thing anymore. I spent a little time with Sups earlier uh, fixing it, so hopefully it's all good. <laughs> and uh, JJ, thank you so, so much for the huge 11 month primary sub. Thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but hello JJ, hello Thel, hello Lefty, Tamboy, we got Seabite, Blaze, Galaxy, Scald, Mirai, Falcon, we got King, oh my goodness, Spoopy Cat, hello, hello, how are you guys? Thel conspired to take my crayons away from me. <laughs> Playing some hard classic rock on Guitar Hero. Ooh. Very nice. Very nice. You're here for the science stuff? I'm here to give you the science stuff. Don't tell teacher that she's a cutie. Oh, okay, I won't tell. Am I going to have a, a spicy chili pepper next to my Rate My Professor score? <laughs> I don't know if that exists over there. I, I don't know if that's just a US thing, rate my professor, not. <laughs> okay, finished Cold War campaign. Noise, noise. Just wanted a grilled cheese. Dude, grilled cheese is so good. Grilled cheese is so good. Have you ever had buffalo chicken grilled cheese? Oh, so good. 
very delicious. Very delicious indeed. Sounds amazing? It is. It is indeed. It is indeed very amazing. Hang on one second. Oh, okay. Huh. Weird. I don't know. <gasps> you hate grilled cheese. Ooh. Make a grilled cheese co. What are you doing? What? He's borking at me. My cheeseburger appeared just before stream. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Very nice indeed. They make you nauseous. Are you lactose intolerant? Puppy. Bro. Relax, dude. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. So, I don't know if I have a lot of announcements. Obviously, science stream today. Um, if you guys like it and we want to continue doing other ones, then I can post something in the Discord for other one uh we can do a movie night this friday so we will do a movie night this friday um tomorrow's dnd one shot so i won't be streaming but i'll probably be streaming the next couple days after that um people seemed interested in doing another holiday hangout for new year's eve so i think we'll probably do that which should be very fun um i will say next week I have a weird work schedule again. I have uh, a 10 to 6 shift, which isn't really good for streaming. So I think what I'm going to do is probably... Oh, wait, I might have a day... We might have a daytime stream one or two days that week. Um, but I might take the rest of those days off, which will work out because I can start doing some stuff with my office that I wanted to do. <laughs> So, we shall see. Hey, Val! Hey, Kanye! How are you guys? Puppy knows you're streaming, so waiting for treat? I know, it's true. Spoopy! Thank you for the 100 biddies. You're so cute! I'm here for Firefly calling animals, dude. <laughs> are you, like, qualified in paleontology or just interested? I have a master's in geology, Kanye, actually. Uh, so... It's been, so, qualifications. <laughs> I have a bachelor's and a master's in geology. Um, my master's is more geoinformatics. So, I haven't really done sort of, I guess, I guess you would call it traditional geology. Um, for about six and a half years. <laughs> so, I did have to go through and refresh myself on some of this stuff. Um, so we might go through and, and look some things up together, um, if I don't have answers for you right away, but I did try to, um, <clears throat> sort of go through, refamiliarize myself with things that I couldn't quite remember. Um, I do have some, hmm, I didn't grab them. I had some <laughs> I had some samples, but they're kind of tucked away, so I can't really bring them up. But that's okay, because I have pictures and stuff. So we're good, we're good. You're a biologist, nice Val. I am doing great. Watching someone struggling to find a parking outside at 1 a.m. Oh, bummer, bummer. Geoinformatics is building computers out of rocks. Yeah, totally. That's exactly what it means. Hey monster, how are you? They make me sick as because when I was younger I love grilled cheese, especially tomato soup. Oh, uh, I get that, King. I get that. A hundred percent. So many cuties. I know. I know. Love science as someone who's who's an arts type. I don't know why I couldn't read that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. Science. I like science a lot. I always have. Uh, when I was little, I always collected rocks and stuff. So, uh, when I got to... <laughs> okay, I'll do it in a second, Kanye. So when I got to college, uh, I did earth science, and then one of my instructors was like, hey, you can't really get 
like a job with just earth science and I was like oh well I was I was considering you know going into um, education with it and doing an education degree um, and he was like you should just do geology <laughs> um, hello sandal hello I see you don't worry I didn't start without you <laughs> Just dissected things and put them under his microscope. Val, me too. I did that too. <clears throat> and then I got more into the rocks. <laughs> I used to do that, and then I was like, I love science. And then I and then I found rocks, and I was like, rocks are great. And I think part of the thing with me and like rocks and minerals and stuff was that my great grandparents, after they retired, went around the U.S. and um, collected rock and mineral samples from all around the US. So I have like I have inherited so many. <laughs> like I have a whole cabinet full of them. Plus um a um a plastic three drawer set on our on our porch actually. <laughs> um that's filled with just the stuff that I picked up during college. Um and yeah, <laughs> it's a good time. It's a very good time. I wanted to put more of my own pictures in here, but I don't have too many for paleontology, so there's only like two pictures of mine in here. <laughs> but some other uh, stuff, like some other topics, I'll have more of my own kind of, um, my own pictures and things. Love rocks too. They're pretty great. Can you even call yourself a geologist if you can't play rock music? <laughs> I know I need to give I need to give the puppy a treat. I did biology because I went into marine biology because I lived most of my life by the Atlantic Ocean. Oh nice! But now I do disaster recovery. Hey! That's great! That's great, honestly though. Disaster recovery planning is 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 good. <laughs> um, I actually, for my master's uh, project, I almost did um, sort of cause and proposed relief effort, <laughs> kind of, like kind of along that lines. Um, we had like some insane flooding. Uh, a few years, actually during my undergrad, during, during college. Um, and I really wanted to do a study of, you know, what were the factors that led to it? How could we work to mitigate that in the future? Um, that sort of thing. So I didn't end up going for it. Um, <laughs> I actually went an education route instead. And I made a website for um, K through 12 and then college. It was like a kind of a two-step thing. There was like a K through 12 area and then a college and university area. And it was teaching or, or rather gathering resources for teachers to instruct on the geology of Mars. And that was sort of what I did for my master's. <laughs> so yeah. There you go. I love info. Info makes my brain go slurp. <laughs> well, I do hope you you enjoy what we're going to talk about today. Geology is something that's just science. Geo geology is fun. Ge honestly, if you have to take like a science um, credit in college, I don't know how it works across the pond, but... Uh, I know in the U.S. usually you have to take like, like three credits of science. If you want a cool class, do geology. Honestly, honest to God, it's so good because the the intro to geology classes are always pretty easy and really fun. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're pretty fun. <laughs> You feel like I'm biased about liking geology? Look, if you get into geology as a degree, you better be prepared to do a lot of work. A lot of work. Because 
it's it's intensive honestly you did not get a passing oh, you didn't passive oh no what you never went to oh, what passive how dare how could you do this you get to lick rocks and everything you get to lick a rock i mean you could lick another rock too there's halite which is nacl which is salt and then there's uh is it sylvite is it sylvite i feel like i just had this conversation with creekster <laughs> hello by the way creekster uh yeah okay it is sylvite sylvite is potassium chloride which is obviously not table salt it tastes like a little bit more bitter and stuff <laughs> It's all these kinds of things. <laughs> <clears throat> Why not lick everything? Uh, sure. You can lick cinnabar if you want. You can lick cinnabar. I believe it's uh, mercury sulfide. <laughs> uh, yep, mercury sulfide. HGS. <laughs> Don't actually do that. Do 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 not do not lick that. <laughs> it's very bad. Very bad indeed. Hello, Dagum. How are you? I hope I didn't miss any hellos. I'm so sorry if I missed any hellos. Star Dancer, did I say hi to you? I I can't recall. <gasps> I'm so sorry. What about Copper Light? I mean, you can lick some poop. If you want to lick some poop, go for it. You know? I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. <laughs> what about Black Goo? Uh, well... <laughs> I'm I'm unsure. <laughs> yes. Poop. That's what copper light is. Fossilized poop. True. True, Dagum. <laughs> Smoke it. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you. You have some pics. Oh, perfect. I would love to see them, Val. Absolutely love to see them. Um, okay, here we go. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm super damn nervous about this. <laughs> I am super nervous about this. Oh, whoa, paleontology. It is, it is us. We are the paleontology. Oh my god, we didn't give puppy a treat. Hang on. Oh, that's the wrong one. Puppy treat game. <laughs> Forgot I had to remake my stream deck because it broke. Hang on. We will feed the boy quick. <clears throat> Professor F. Fly. Yes. Uh, credit to Sandal for that one. <laughs> You're collecting fossils some time ago? Nice! Nice! Stream has ended. So, uh, there you go. There's GLG. <laughs> Am I a real prof fly? I, I wanted to be. <laughs> I really did. I really like teaching people. Losing it. Oh, uh, it's the penguin! It's the penguin. Mainly brachiopods and nautiloids. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, so <clears throat> here's how I sort of did this. This is like a very broad overview. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> um, very broad overview. What I figured is I'll go through things. Um, I I just kind of wanted to give you guys like a basic understanding of like different processes and stuff <clears throat> um and then what i figured is if you guys have specific questions or there's a particular area of paleontology you want to delve into or something we can you know just i can hop into google and show you images or whatever um that kind of thing do we have to show hands for questions you can just put them in the chat 
<laughs> um, so yeah, because I've never done a science stream before. So I have no idea what to expect with this. <laughs> is that cutie in the pic you? Yes, it is. Um, that was me in college. Back in, back in the days when I was an adorable little human. Um, that was on a field trip. Uh, that's my right in the rain. Uh, which I have like five or six of. <laughs> they're super useful. Um, they're these neat notebooks. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're these, they're, they're waterproof notebooks. And they're amazing. Like, like so amazing. So we have them. Wait, did you Creekster? I remember this field trip. Oh no, I think you did because then we went down to the lower part with the waterfall and we took pictures by the waterfall too. I remember that. Ah. <laughs> I don't have all my pictures on this PC. I wonder if I can find that picture of us somewhere. That was a good one. <clears throat> field trips are the fucking best. Dude, geology, ge geologists go on field trips all the time. It's great. It's heckin' great. We, like, literally almost every class <laughs> was, like, a, was, like, a field trip. Yes, with Shannon. That was awesome. Because, like, even if we were just, there was a stream by our college. So we were just, like, going down by the stream and stuff. So, um, how do geologists make a living? Sure, I can ask. I can uh, talk about that for a second. So, geologists have <laughs> qu quite a lot of, um things they can do so obviously you can go into academics um you can be a professor researcher that's a lot of the more common when you see a geologist with a phd they're pretty often they're teaching <laughs> teaching doing um doing research um is huge uh oil yeah spoopy so oil um i decided not to go into oil because it's, it's, oil is very competitive. I also just don't like oil companies, but uh, that's a side thing. Um, but it's very competitive. Um, you basically have to, m most of the major oil companies, if you go into them as a geologist, you're going into them as like a, we're going to train you for two years and then you work for us for five. So you basically have to decide, yeah, I'm going to give seven to eight years of my life to this company now. Like, that's a contract you have to sign. <laughs> so it's kind of intense. Um, but yeah, uh, you can definitely do mining, remediation, construction, engineering, absolutely. Um, Creasers helping me out here. <laughs> um, there's all kinds of things. Um, you can get into GIS, um, geoinformatics, that whole thing, um, with sort of what I was talking about before, um, which also kind of ties back into mining and remediation because there's so many like sub, I mean, there's sub disciplines of a lot of, a lot of scientific disciplines, but, um, paleontology in particular, you're probably looking at being an instructor. <laughs> you're probably looking at being a professor and doing research. Um, you can also, you know, there's, there's like, uh, petrology, you can go into oil, you're doing hydrology, you would probably go into remediation, um, that sort of thing. There's like a bunch of different ways that you can use the sub-disciplines to go into each of your different, um, different, you know, job areas. There's a, there's a lot of of uh variety i think <laughs> it's just a little disappointing because i feel like when i was in college they pushed really hard on academic uh, like academia and they pushed really hard on oil and nothing in between very much <laughs> like it was very much yeah go get a master's go get a phd or go work for these oil companies. Um, and not a lot was talked about the middle, which a lot of it is like consulting, uh, consulting and stuff like that. 
Um, so yeah, it was interesting. Hey, Kling Kling, what's happening? We're learning about paleontology. I wish we had more engineering. You know, I do too, Craig, sir. I think I probably would have gone into that if we'd been taught a little bit more about it. <laughs> Can you go to the bathroom? Make it quick, spoopy. Oh wait, I should do the old, can you go to the bathroom? <laughs> Did your teachers ever do that to you? When you said, can I go to the bathroom? They'd be like, I don't know, can you? And you'd have to say, may I go to the bathroom? <laughs> oh no, Spoopy. <laughs> <clears throat> Is that a studio spark plug? What, what do you mean? I was always confused about why they didn't know whether I could go to the <laughs> Like if you're interpreting it literally, then the answer is yes. Agreed. Oh yeah, Spoopy, you use a litter box anyway. You're right, Sandal, you're right. Is there going to be a quiz? No, there's going to be no quiz. No quiz at all. All right, so let's get into it. Um, and, you know, Kriegster, since you're here, feel free to jump in at any point if you would like. Um, so what is paleontology? So paleontology is the... There should be have fun with that. <laughs> True. So paleontology is the history of prehistoric life forms through the examination of fossils. Um, so obviously I think everyone here can kind of tell what a fossil is. Um, it's the fossilized remains of a prehistoric creature, prehistoric, um, organism, I should say. Um, and paleontology is learning about them. Um, so this includes the studies of different types of fossils, um, fossilization. So the actual process of fossilizing, um, organisms, so taphonomy. Um, and the classification of species. And that sort of goes into a little bit more paleobiology. Um, yeah, yes, yes, Dagum. How, how can I help you, Dagum? <laughs> that sort of ex existed only 2020. Oh yeah, totally. Click <laughs> Spook me a three-horned cat. <laughs> oh my God. Why don't we just research dinosaurs by bringing them back to life, like in Jurassic Park? Oh, excellent question. Because they'll murder you. <laughs> um. Wait, I don't know. If it's, uh... Wait, what? I gotta go back up. Are birds technically dinosaurs, or is that just a thing that people say to sound cool? It's like... It's more that there's like a common ancestor. Oh, I made the fossil joke already yesterday. <laughs> I have I have my own fossil joke in here. You did though, you did. <laughs> um So yeah, so that's that's the mostly paleontology hands paperback having written up the book. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Is bison the fossil joke? No, it's not. There's a common ancestor between everything if we just... Going based on that, I'm a dinosaur? Well, yes. But it's kind of like... <laughs> I'm about the birds. No, you're not a fossil, Co. How dare? How dare? What is this? Am I dinosaur? No. You're not. You're young and spry. <laughs> very young and very spry. <laughs> um, so I did a little bit of a brief, um, or well, I guess I should ask, do you guys have any more questions about what paleontology is? Also, I really got in, oh, I, I should talk. I could talk a little bit about the research that I did in undergrad, too. It's been so long since I've been into this, though. <laughs> so very long. <clears throat> no bacteria that evolved to decompose and exist for a very long time, leading to trees that are fossilized, being found for only... Wait, 
Am I reading this right? Oh, yeah. Yes, Falcon. Yes, Falcon. How can I help you? <laughs> I like that you have this handy bow. <laughs> Oh, I should probably take the Christmas bundle. Oh, before I forget, the Christmas merch, I'm going to leave it up until after New Year's and then I'll take it down. So you guys have like another week if you want to get any of it. Just so you know. <laughs> Must come up in the exam. Yes, write every word I say down. Every single word. You're all cute. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I did a little bit of research on the history of paleontology. I know some of it, um, but there was some other stuff. So paleontology has actually been uh, studied since like <laughs> ancient times. <laughs> I wanted to be dramatic. Um, so there were folks in like the sixth century that were sort of doing their own kind of studying on marine fossils. So it's not like a new concept. Um, can I get a hell yes for Mary Anning? I know. I know. She's awesome. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so the concept of studying fossils is not new. Like this is, this is something that's been going on for a very, very long time. Um, it wasn't really until, uh, and I'm going to butcher his name. I'm just going to say George, uh, Cuvier. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but he was more, um, he did a lot of research about anatomy kind of stuff. Um, don't judge me, JJ. <laughs> but he had this debate about extinction, causes of extinction, and that sort of thing. And it sort of led to the creation of paleontology as a discipline. And this happened sort of in the 18th and 19th century. Um, again, not uncommon for people to be you know, looking at fossils around this time, around any time between the 6th century and then. Um, 6th century BC and then. Just to make that clear. <laughs> um, and then in the 1800s, um, there was Mary Anning who was an incredible uh, female English paleontologist. She did a lot of research on the Cretaceous period um, and she was absolutely the coolest. Um, she made a lot, a lot of strides. Um, also in the 1800s, obviously, was Charles Darwin, who we learn about the most uh, on the origin of species. So he did a lot more of talking about um, the the evolutionary factor of species. So, um, you know, where we get like, you know, survival of the fittest. And stuff like that. Um, that's sort of where that comes from. I never had a class in English before. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what? Why no mention of Ross Geller? Ah, uh, yes. Ross Geller. The uh, famous, famous uh, paleontologist <laughs> made many amazing discoveries <laughs> the pivotopolis uh yep that was one <laughs> the professor has steam open professor is a gamer it's true <laughs> um but yeah so then the 20th century brought in like radiometric dating and the geologic time scale Geologic time scale is very, very important um, because it's sort of how we defined the periods of time that the the periods of geologic time by using fossils, and we'll get into that a little bit later um, in in the presentation. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there you go. Do you have any questions? Mary Anning was super, super cool. Just so you know. You should look her up. <laughs> you don't know what Charles Darwin sounds like. You have a question. Okay, monster. I am prepared. Tell me your question. 
Nexus. How are you? How does one be so super cute like you? Wow. Uh, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I am super cute. I'm just a small potato doing their best. My favorite paleontologist is Marsh because he's why so many people think the brontosaurus is a real dinosaur. <laughs> True. Hello, Emster! How are you? How are you? How did they find marine fossils but not land fossils in the 6th century? Hey, Mudkips! We learning today. How do they find marine fossils, but not land fossils in the 6th century? Um, I mean, I'm sure they did often, like, I feel like the, well, there, there's a couple, like, factors to this. One is location. Um, depending on where you are, you're probably going to find a lot of marine fossils, um, just because to have a fossil, it has to become fossilized over a very, very long period of time. If that area ge uh, geographically was, you know, a, a marine shelf or something for millions of years, you're going to have more marine fossils than you are land fossils. Because if you've only had like a couple thousand years, it's not going to... I, ho I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly, Kriegster. Exactly. Marine environments change. So it's kind of like a... You have to think of... Where you are in relation to the environment that it was millions of years ago. Kind of thing. Paravex is a paleontologist? Yes. He is. He is indeed. Did they think that certain whale corpses were weird seabores? <laughs> that I am not sure. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, so so marine fossils means, uh, like, fossilized marine life. Not that they were found in the sea, necessarily. I mean, you could, but, um... Yeah, this this relates specifically to like the type of fossil that it is rather than where it's found. But yeah. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. <laughs> I see what you meant now. <laughs> okay. No, because certain whales have jaw bones that sort of look like tusks. Oh. I mean, it's possible. It <laughs> Who 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 knows? <laughs> you heard that somewhere? I'm not sure. I am not sure. Okay. So here is where I can talk a little bit about the research that I did in undergrad. So the next portion, uh, the next part of paleontology is taphonomy in the fossil record. So taphonomy is, have I seen primeval? Yes. I loved primeval. It was amazing. <laughs> um, so taphonomy is the study of how organisms decay and become fossilized or preserved. So it's basically what happens between when an organism dies and when it becomes fossilized. Um, and that's what I did on, or that's what I did for my, um, my research in undergrad. I spent like two years <laughs> on this research. So I'll explain it in a minute. Um, the fossil record is a group of fossils that have been analyzed and arranged chronologically and in taxonomic order. So... The fossil record is our record of fossils. Um, after they've been studied, they're arranged, you know, we we date them. They've been arranged chronologically um, through time and in their taxonomic orders. So we figure out who, um, I'm so bad at saying this in like as layman terms as possible. <laughs> um, they're, especially if, <laughs> date them dinner in a movie oh yeah yeah how, how else would you do it nexus <laughs> exactly exactly nexus and dagum understand perfect <laughs> does that mean how many taxes they paid absolutely for sure 
He has to explain it to us plebs? No, no. I just don't want to use like too many Speci I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but basically, who descends from who? Um, going back to the common ancestor thing, just sort of figuring out what's what's part of what. Um, I'm putting that together. Um, and then fossils are created when organisms are die and are encased in sediment. So, um, there's. Like, this this can happen in many, many different ways. Um, I meant to actually put it in here, but I didn't. There's different uh, ways that you can see, like, how do I want to word this? So there, there there's two things. There's death assemblages and there's life assemblages. Um just as as an example of like a way that you can tell um how organisms died and then that they were then encased and all, stuff like that so like a um life assemblages and death assemblages can tell you if an organism or if a group of organisms we have here let me look up um that's what it is Okay, so tentaculites. Um, they're super common around where I live. They're these kind of neat fossils. They were like these weird... They're kind of like a mystery. <laughs> um, but they're really, really cool. Um, I wonder if I can do life and death assemblages. Uh... I wanted to put this in here and I totally forgot. Um, I don't know if I have said. Where is this? I wanna I wanna find this for you guys. Oh, that's an abstract. We don't want to look through that. <laughs> no. Sad. I wanted a good picture to show you guys. Um, bummer. Will we see teacher's browser history? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Assemblage is also an art genre? Oh. <laughs> well, a life... Okay, so I just want to put this definition up here. I hope you guys can see that okay. Um, life assemblages, they're basically... Um, it's like a former living community is what they say here. Um, they're basically... I don't know if you have a good definition, Craigster. Um, they basically... Like, assemblages of fossils. I should make this clear. They're not necessarily, like, associated with each other. Like, they, they're... They were brought together after after death. I feel like I'm not explaining this very well. I wish I had a, a visual. I don't have a visual though. <laughs> um, but they sort of give um, like kind of a clue to how they could have died when you think about their orientation. Um, you can see, oh, they were all oriented this way. You know, you can tell sort of the uh, direction of flow. There's like, yeah, so it, exactly, Creaser. So life assemblage is like a landslide that submerges and kills a group of organisms at the same time. Um, I don't know these guys. I'm <laughs> So there's like different ways that organisms can be preserved and it tells us a little bit about what was happening with them at the time of their death um or at least when they were preserved kind of thing um how this relates to like taphonomy and i i wish that i had just put it in here but i didn't it's okay um <laughs> how this relates to taphonomy is when i was in undergrad i decided to do a project 
um, because I started getting really into paleontology and I started getting really into um, vertebrate paleontology, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, which is, you know, what you, you guys are excited about, I think, which is like dinosaurs. <laughs> about to fossilize some noodles. Yeah, death assemblage is where a bunch of organisms collect after they die, which you can tell because it's it's like, um, it's obvious when you see it in an example and I wish I had a good one. Um, but uh, so for my undergrad project, I did sort of a look at taphonomy in terms of the different, um, the, the different environments that a bones could be under uh, prior to fossilization. So we looked sort of at the, the, the main thing was looking at breakage patterns of bones because often you're going to find broken bones. <laughs> um, so that's what we looked at. And we said, is there a way to tell if the breakage of a bone is different under different environments. So if a bone was waterlogged when it was fossilized versus if it was in an extremely arid environment. Um, so what we did was, and I will be honest, this was like, <laughs> I loved this research, but how we did it was not how it should have been done. <laughs> it was a very flawed, um, Unfortunately, very flawed experiment because I had asked for a specific, I had basically asked for a pressure, pressure gauge so that I could measure the exact uh, amount of pressure it took to break bones, which was part of the breakage. It was partly breakage patterns and partly breakage um, pressure and just like looking at how that works. And instead, I got to measure water in a plastic cup and drop it on the bones. It was terrible, and I was so upset about it. But what it was meant to be, which was going to be very, very cool, was we waterlogged some bones. I basically had to... Um, uh, this is where the, like, the biology part comes in. Uh, because I had to skin and eviscerate. Uh, a lot of mice, a lot of fish, uh, some mink, um, what else did I do? Rabbits I had at one point. Um, yeah, it was intense. Um, well, I had to scale the fish. <laughs> um, and then I had to dry them out and... What we wanted to do, because obviously we had to get the, you know, the meat and the muscles and everything off of the bones, I had to dry them. So we put them in a fume hood for a while, and then I fed them to dermestid beetles. <laughs> and the reason for doing this is because if we were to, you know, cut off the meat and stuff, the bones would be cleaned in, an, in, you know, such a way that they could break or get nicked by a knife or something like that. And we needed them to be preserved and as, as um, you know, as clean an environment, I guess, as possible. So uh, once the domestic beetles clean the bones, then we could work on the experiment. So we waterlogged and, and like super dried out. A bunch of different things. Um, yeah, we basically needed to follow natural processes. Exactly. Um, so we waterlogged the bones. We dried out the bones. And then obviously we had like a, a control group uh, set of bones in the middle for each of the different species and everything. Um, and then we looked at the breakage patterns of the bones when I broke them all. And it was just like intense. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Um, and there is a picture of me later on, um, working on reassembling some of the, um, some of the skeletons. It was, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It was definitely like a PhD level project <laughs> for my, my sophomore college <laughs> the 
knowledge. It was intense. I don't think my, uh, Kriegster knows. Kriegster knows. <laughs> Kriegster knows the pain I went through. <laughs> However, it was fascinating. Um, and I think that's what kept me going was just because it was, it was just so cool. It was just so cool. Um, did I have a dog dig the bones out? No, I had to go in and dig them out myself. Which is very frustrating when you have tiny little metacarpals for for mice. PhD work is or yeah. Yeah. Agree. <laughs> Agree. Um so yeah, that's sort of that's sort of like what what uh I did uh in terms of taphonomy. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. But it's pretty cool. Um so the next thing we can talk about seems like a waste of having bur <laughs> bur burrowed bones, borrowed bones. <laughs> um, the next thing I just want to talk about is the tree of life. So the tr the tree of life, uh, the the phylogenic tree of life, is a way for us to represent evolutionary relationships among organisms. So, um. We've the, also to note, um, as is with a lot of things, um, these are based on hypotheses. You know, there's a lot of things in the fossil record that we don't know because very, very little of like very few of the species that have ever lived have ever been fossilized if you if you think i i don't even remember the exact percentage of it but it's very very low so a lot of it is is very educated guesses <laughs> definitely and science is evolving every second absolutely absolutely i mean there things change all the time in science um as new things new techniques are developed for understanding um processes um or more uh you know, uh, finer equipment when you're measuring different things, they can all give you a different picture. So it's sort of like this ever evolving process. And how do we know that if we can't see? Uh, how do we know what? Scientific info has a half life. <laughs> um, th if you're talking about like in terms of uh, in terms of like fossils and the evolutionary tree. That's something where it's like, you're looking at what does exist, how it relates to things, common genes. Um, there, there's like a bunch of different ways that sort of goes into the paleo bio and everything like that. But we can tell a lot about environments for many different ways um, of looking at things. There's, there's like a lot of overarching um, ways that you can use fossils to paint a picture of what the past may have looked like. I have common genes with your friends. <laughs> Science is an unchanging juggernaut dating back over 2000 years. But I found this really neat website that I thought you guys might get a kick out of. Um, so this is sort of a an interactive site. Um, this was just something interesting I found. So this is a phylogeny tree here. This is like a, a phylogenic tree of every species um and if we go into animals and we go into here we are just this tiny little piece here hey shelby blakely how are you fractal <laughs> we are just this tiny little speck on this massive phylogeny tree so um i just wanted to show like we can go to humans. We are just this tiny little speck here. It's crazy. You guys, this is so cool. You love paleontology? Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> so when you think about humans in the grand scheme of species, look how my cursor is still where we were we are so small compared to the grand scheme of everything <laughs> so
So it's 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 insane. It's insane. It, it's it's so so cool to think about. Um you know, we we came from eukaryotes. Like just this and it it's even crazier to think like this is this is um this is like like uh plants or uh animals and like insects and stuff in this entire branch just like bacteria it's insane it's insane to think about it's so cool um i just got like a physical sensation of feeling very very small i know small you you feel as small as a who on a snowflake i know it's crazy that is pretty cool i know it's insane right and so paleontology you know looks at this kind of stuff it's like we know that all these different species and everything existed and when they existed and everything like that um because of what we've determined from looking at fossils and stuff important here's a fossil <laughs> so it's it's really really cool we can also look at l let's look at uh ko's ancestors where are unicorns in this tree? Oh, uh, it's, um, uh, they're they're in they're in the mammals. They're in the mammals. <laughs> I, I, I swear it. <laughs> let's look at uh, let's look at Ko's ancestors, the frogs and toads. They're over here. So small. So small. This one is neat too, because it tells you how many species there are in each of these little areas, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so, this is just like, like the stuff that I find super, super interesting. <laughs> I think it's so, so cool. Like, it's just fascinating like marsupials over here and there's like rodents and th it's it's just so cool it's so so cool i think mojo is more of a gorilla true true we'll go here we'll look at mojo's ancestors oh there we go you thought fish weren't real. <laughs> unicorns are Scotland's national animal. It's true. It's true. Uh, also, uh, a unicorn is... Uh... Wait, I don't remember who got it. Was it... Was it mine or bison's? <laughs> I forget. One of our Patronuses when we took the, the Pottermore quiz. I think it was bison's. Got a unicorn. Which makes sense. He's amazing. You're a monkey. You're not a monkey. You're an ape. Or you share a common ancestor with an ape anyway. <laughs> Your Patronus was Slytherin. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I, I just thought this was really cool. Just like a really neat way to demonstrate uh, the phylogenic trees and stuff. Um, there's a lot to phylogenic trees. Um, so, you know, if at some point you wanted me to go more into it, I could. Um, but that could be like its own thing in and of itself. That was sort of like the problem I was having with creating this stuff for stream was that I was just like, I... Oh no, this is a website you can all access. Here. I'll grab it for you. Here. What? Well, uh. Well, just copy and paste that. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> You're in bed now because it's too cold? <gasps> You're so cozy. Um. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. You might be able to just go. Okay. So you can actually just go here, I think. You might be able to just do that. Um, but yeah, so pretty cool. Um, just a different way to look at it. There, all there is also um, an advanced thing 
so you can track common ancestors if you wanted to just as a neat thing so there you go it auto translates to dutch for you oh nice <laughs> There you go. I hope that kind of gives you a good idea of like sort of evolutionary relationships, how things um, are designated in there. That was pretty cool. So now we can move on to the types of fossils. So there's a few different types of fossils. Um, sponges are so cool. Yes. Yes. Evolution is so cool. It is. It's very cool. <laughs> If there are, like, certain things from this uh, stream that you want me to go into a little bit more, because, again, I, I wanted to make this as sort of, like, open. I, like, I don't want to say simplified, but, but like, I wanted to give, like, a basic understanding. And then if there were things you wanted to go into more, um, let me know. I am absolutely that kid in the front row asking like 227 questions for lecture. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, so going into the types of fossils. So we have several different types of fossils. Um, we have body fossils, which are the actual remains of an organism. Um, we have molds and casts. Um, so either impressions of, of an organism or actually filled in versions. So you can think of like a shell fills in with sediment. And then the shell around that breaks down, but the sediment inside is still holding the form of that organism. You can think of something like that. Um, there's also trace fossils, which are impressions of biological activity. So we see that a lot with burrows, which is this picture um, up here on the top right. Those are some burrows. Um, you see it a lot with like worms, stuff like that. Um, what if aliens just burrowed the fossils? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, then you get uh, replacement, which is... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, along with burrows, you can also have for trace fossils, um, like footprints. Um, you can have... So, like, you think of dinosaur tracks. You can have that. Um, you can have trails. So things that aren't really burrows, but things uh, like, I don't know, like how a slug leaves a trail behind stuff. Um, kind of a similar concept. Cat sat in my lap and keeps falling off. <laughs> That's a horseshoe crab. Oh, Mariah, uh, bottom right is a trilobite. It's called a trilobite. There's a lot of different species of trilobites. Um, uh, Another form of, or another type of fossil is replacement. So the original material is replaced with minerals. Um, the, I think a, a lot of, a lot of the replacement is done with like, you end up getting like opalite and quartz and like, uh, there, there's like a lot of cool, <laughs> a lot of cool things. I don't know if anybody here has ever seen like, like, um, like an ammonite that's been replaced with minerals. They look really, really neat. Um, and then petrification, if you've ever seen petrified wood, it's when pore spaces are filled with minerals. So not replaced, but rather like filled in. Um, but yeah. So these are sort of examples of those. Um, I had a good... There was a really good image of a gastropod. Maybe, did I type? Um, well, I guess this is actually a good example. So this would be a mold where you would get like, you know, you can think of, of pressing something into the sand and then taking it off. You would get like an imprint of what it was. And then you get a cast, which is, you know, if you're thinking of, you have a mold, you fill it with something, and then you take it out of the mold, it's cast. 
if that makes sense. Unfortunately, I'm in the 21st century and I have no access to fresh dino poop. Ah, oh, bummer. <laughs> um, we're back to breaking bones again. Hey, Squishy, how are you? Um, but yeah, so this is sort of um, examples of that. This is another trilobite. So this would be the mold and this would be the cast. So it's pretty cool. It's it's pretty neat. I have a lot of both. Oh, this is another example of a trilobite. Trilobites are really damn cool. They're uh, arthropods. Uh, they're really neat. <laughs> I like them a lot. How goes the science? The science goes well. Welcome to the unfiltered nonsense of my brain. <laughs> um, let me give you guys another example. Let me give you a replacement. Replace, replacement fossils. Uh, so yeah, like if you've ever seen an ammonite like this, you know, something like this. This is an example of petrified. So you have the pore spaces filled with minerals. Very, very cool. Very cool. Um, you can also get carbon. So a lot of plant life uh, is preserved as carbon. So you can see a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> They're really, really neat. Um, here's an example of an opalized uh, permineralization of a fossil. Here's one for uh, agate. Those kinds of things. Oh, I, I laughed, Mariah. <laughs> You're gonna- What? No, sandal. Don't do it. <laughs> There's just some cool things. I mean, this is uh, not- Don't worry about that. <laughs> this part. This is the part. <laughs> So yeah, really cool. Really, you get, I, I really, I really like the replacement, the per mineral, per mineralization because it, it just looks so pretty. <laughs> it looks so pretty to me. Um, I can also show you. Hey apples, how are you? So there's trace fossils like these. There's actually um, a museum in, I think it's Massachusetts where they have like racks of dinosaur footprints. It's so cool. Like they put them, they, they dug them up. <laughs> they put them on, um, in racks and you can go down to the, like the basement area where they house them and just pull them out They're I mean, they're huge, but you can pull them out and look at them and they have like all different kinds of dinosaur tracks. It's so so cool. You're good. I'm glad you're good. I'm very glad you are good. I'm doing pretty well myself. Yeah, it's like an archive. Yeah, it, it's really, really cool. How can there be fossils in America if they only got discovered in the 1500s? Uh. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. A great question, Tam. <laughs> um, oh, I should also mention, um, there are fossils that are not, like, they're not due to biologic factors. So, um, if you look at like ripple marks so you can have ripple marks that get fossilized as well i mean they're not like they're, they're not like fossilized they're more sedimentary structures but it's it's like a similar concept to trace fossils similar concept but not the same um but just something to to also bring in there um, which we can get to when we do like our sedimentary stream, but just kind of a, a neat thing. It's it's like a, a preservation of um, so 
What? Wait, what? <laughs> Why did it filter out LMAO? <laughs> what the hell? I'm looking at this. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Looks about right. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, okay. Brain. Actually, hang on one second. I'll be right back. I'm gonna show you guys something cuz I'm a dork. Hey, Elijah. How are you? I'll be right back. I'll be right back. You ready? <laughs> okay, so um This is this is my Eurypterid? This is Yuri? <laughs> and, um, and this is my Trilobite, and he doesn't have a name yet, but I love him very much. <laughs> so, I have- I have plushes. <laughs> I have plushes because I love them and they make me happy. You gonna play some games for friends? Okay, sounds good, Apples. Sounds really good. Enjoy your games. Good luck. I was thinking about naming my trilobite Dave. Just just call him Dave. <laughs> Be perfect. <gasps> Don't look at my toes. You saw nothing. <laughs> but yeah. I've had Yuri for a while. Like since college. <laughs> beautiful what <gasps> maggie hi maggie how are you sweetie hey you maggie came up to say hi yuri <laughs> no spelled like that like eurypterid but yuri <laughs> um so yeah so now we can move on to invertebrate fossils. So there are different kinds of fossils. There are invertebrate fossils, so animals without a vertebrae. There's vertebrate, which are animals with a vertebrae, and there are um, plant fossils. Aw. Look at Maggie. She's so cute. Look at her. <laughs> I love her. Um, so common kinds of invertebrates, invertebrate fossils, um, are- ah! What? Falcon! <laughs> Falcon, thank you for the two gifted subs! Thank you so much! <gasps> Cute ranger and Mirai! Hey! Enjoy your subs, guys. Ah! Thank you so, so much! I really appreciate that. I really, really do. Enjoy your emotes. Thank you, Falcon. You're so cute. The heck. <laughs> um, so invertebrate fossils are things like mollusks, arthropods. So, you know, Yuri and, and Dave now are trilobite. Uh, uh, echinoderms, uh, brachiopods, uh, cnidarians, um, those kinds of... So... I can look each of those up just so that you can see. So mollusks would be, let me do, so that you can see what they look as fossils. So mollusks would be things like this. Then you would get, um, next up was arthropods, which we looked up. You get sort of, it, it's kind of cool because you get like a bunch of different, like mollusks are, are, are pretty neat. <laughs> um, a lot of, I feel like a lot of invertebrate paleontologists study uh, mollusca and brachiopoda, which are the mollusks and brachiopods. Um, but yeah, there's like a, there's, there's tons of them. <laughs> They're awesome. Um, Arthropods, 
So we've got like, you know, our classic trilobites, which are pretty cool. I think they're so neat. I really, really like brachiopods. They're, they're, or um, brachiopods, trilobites. I can words. They're very cool. I think my favorites are crinoids though, which I can show you. <laughs> they're not trilobites. They're something completely different, but they're very cool. Very cool indeed. Um, you also get uh, echinoderms. Which are my favorites because these are the these are the uh, crinoids. We get crinoids like this. Like this. They're very, very cool. Um, if you've ever seen little um being an invertebrate paleontologist would be tough. You're really limited. Not at all. There's so many species. <laughs> Try the brachio. It's kind of graphic. Oh god, I'm scared. Oh, <laughs> because you have the. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, this is yeah. <laughs> we. I'm pretty sure our paleontology professor used this exact picture when we were in school because we were all like, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> lingulata. Yep. Yep. <laughs> cursed. It's a little cursed. It's a little cursed. <laughs> um, what I was going to say, though, about uh, crinoids. Crinoids are super cool, and I really, really like them. But if you ever... Where's your dance champ? I don't know. I None of the... um, Is BTTV down? Because I'm not seeing any of the BTTV emotes. So I'm unsure. Um, But if you've ever seen... Like, little... um. Let me hang on. Crinoid columnal. If you've ever seen little Cheerio looking things, like if you've ever seen a little like these, these. If you've ever seen these, those are those are crinoid columnals. So if you've ever seen those little fossils or something like this where it has the star in it, um things like that. Like this right here, this, this. Those are all uh, crinoid columnals. And they're very, very cool. <laughs> Cheerios, yes. The Cheerios. The Cheerios. Those are dried bananas. Shh. Don't give, away. <laughs> Don't give it away. Only not working here. What the heck, man? Why does it hate me? Books that really can't be possible. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, sure. And that actually brings us back to a lot of soft bodied invertebrates are not preserved. So you have to rely heavily on trace fossils for those. Is in the pocket of big dry banana. <laughs> are these really fragile? Um, they can be. I mean, I, I guess it really depends on the size because they can be quite small, you know, like this is a penny. Um, or they can be a little bit larger like this. So. It really depends kind of the, the state of them, I guess. Hey, Fudgy! How are you? Welcome, welcome. We are learning about the paleontology today. Um, but I just think they're so cool. I think crinoids are extremely neat. Um, there were species of crinoids. Crinoids are still around today, by the way. Um, the, the hold fast is how they would anchor themselves. There were some species that could let go and float a distance and then settle back down. And I just, I thought they were the coolest things ever, but this is like a modern, modern one. Um, they would have like these sort of feathery, um, arms that would come out. I thought they were really neat. I really like crinoids. I think they're really cool. <laughs> 
Been lurking since the Philo tree bit. Oh, nice, nice. Because they are built close to the water? <laughs> no. <laughs> are a lot of the invertebrate species around today? Maybe not exactly, but pretty close. Uh, there's a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of them that are... Well, I mean, that's sort of... Um, to go back to the... Uh, <laughs> this <laughs> that sandal showed yes you get species of like brachiopods and stuff that are still around um mollusca you know all of those are still around what what is this what is that emo deck <laughs> oh my god i'll bring it up for you skull there you go. It's perfect. <laughs> Ranger! Hello! How are you? There you go. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. Just for you, Scald. <laughs> um... What else was I going to bring up? Let's see. Uh, we look at their... Oh! Cnidarians, which are cool. Look at these guys. So neat. So neat. Cnidarians are like jellyfish, essentially. So you get lots of these boys. They're like, well, they're not just jellyfish though. I shouldn't say that. They're, they're, some of it are jellyfish. Some of it are like, like the sea anemones and stuff like that. Yeah. They're neat. I love jellyfish. I think they're so cool. I think so many things are so cool. Moon jellies are my favorite. <laughs> to second mouth. Because in the embryo, the mouth forms second after the butthole. It's the perf- it's- it's perfect. This is the best way to send a group animals together, yes. <laughs> can you put jellyfish on your bread? Uh, you know, you can do anything you want, Tam, if you're brave enough. Don't let the man hold you down. <laughs> Just, uh, don't put that one on there. <laughs> um... Yeah, so there, there's like a bunch of different kind of invertebrates. Um, I thought they were pretty cool for a while, but I also really like vertebrates because they're also very, very cool. So we can go on to them now. Why did I hear butthole? <laughs> Embrace it. So there is me. And that is me putting together a little mouse skeleton back in the day when I wore a lot of flannel. I wore a lot of flannel and I wore a lot of uh, I painted my nails a lot. <laughs> Just overall looked a little better. <laughs> what? Co, please! <laughs> um, but vertebrates basically refer to organisms uh, with backbones. Hey, modern! How are you? So when you were gay <laughs> Yes. Yep. <laughs> do I still do geology? Not so much, Star Dancer. I, I tried so hard to find um, a job in my degree. Uh, and I thought that I had found one before I got my current job, but I was misled. Uh, so unfortunately, I do not do a lot of geology anymore. Um, I'd really love at some point to work my way back into it. I've been considering going back for teaching so that I can be like a high school earth science teacher because I would absolutely love that. Um, it was actually, um, Mr. House, thank you so much for the follow. Um, my high school, or actually he was my middle school uh, earth science teacher uh, first. And then he moved up to the high school the same year that I went up to the high school. 
Um, but he went to the same college that I, or I went to the same college he went to. Um, and he also did geology with, um, or he did earth science with a geology concentration. And he was such a huge inspiration to me. And he's really why I went into earth science to begin with. Um, because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it. Um, obviously I knew I was very interested in science. I wanted to be an astronomer for the longest time. Um, and then I thought about doing, uh, astro geology kind of thing. So I don't know. I, 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 I kind of want to get back into it. Um, but I don't know where to go from there. So, and I already have so many things that I, that I really like to do. Hey, elusive. How are you? Misleading people is not a very vertebrate maneuver. <laughs> very, very not at all. Neither oil or earthquakes and faults in the West. Oh, that would be awesome, Ranger. We are learning about fossils. My girlfriend would love this right now. Tell her to come hop in. Astrogeology is super cool. Yes, yes. I, I wanted to do it like with a concentration in lunar study. Like I wanted to do it astrogeology for moons if I could, but... The other issue though, guys, I'm not very good at maths. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I struggle a lot with it. So um, I kind of put a roadblock up for myself that I wish I hadn't back in the day. Because I think if I just, I just, uh, hey, Cole, so rude. Maths is good. I appreciate it. But I'm just not good at it. <laughs> number one. <laughs> rule number one of all these mods being that at math. It's true. It's our qual it's our like number one qualification. The mod app. You got put on there. Yeah, I, I'm terrible at math. <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway, some uh, common vertebrates. Uh, you have reptiles, amphibians, fish, birds, mammals. I'm sure you guys can figure out what it means by an organism with a backbone. <laughs> um, but that's where you would, um, that's where you would uh, work mostly with dinosaurs as vertebrate uh, paleontology. Um, fun fact, the oldest vertebrate are fish, which makes sense. But there you go, there's a fun fact. <laughs> This math test in the mod application, if you fail it, you get the job. <laughs> True. <laughs> Wait, we can't give it away too much, guys. <laughs> hey, Mighty! Hey, I learned my ex was invertebrate. <laughs> Is there a horny test? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I failed it. Just by having lewd fly as an emote, I failed it. have a final exam where I got an 88% only because I didn't have time to do the final question which was worth 12%? Damn! That's amazing. I used to be. I, I was I was super good at multiplication. It's really subtraction that got me. I don't know why. I couldn't deal with it. So now I subtract by adding. Um, but yeah, so, so vertebrate paleontology is a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of dino dinosaurs, <laughs> honestly, but it's not just that. I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff, um, but most, the most popular version is definitely dinosaurs. Um, only people spineless is so 2001. <laughs> just call them invertebrates. <laughs> Should. Should be the new thing. And now I'm kind of wishing that I went into... I'm kind of wishing I went into, um... Plate tectonics. In relation to fossils. So... Is that gonna be a good one? Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Okay. So any anything like this... We'll go to... Geological Society. Would you look at that? So, this is sort of a, um, 
I'm sure a lot of people have heard about uh, Pangaea um, when the land masses of Earth were connected. Um, so it was... It, it's, it's really interesting and important. Um, and this goes not just for fossils, like this concept, um, but also different geologic structures. So you could have, um, you know, I don't know if this is specifically correct, but you could have like, um, if you had a geologic structure here and a geologic structure here that developed around the same time, even after these plates pushed apart, you could still have, you know, remnants of those structures uh, geologically. So it, it's kind of neat because then it's like, um, and the same fossils in Africa and South America. Yeah, it was it was the the Mesosaurus is the most, you know, the most commonly known about. That was this. So this was like the the South America and Africa, and they were like, oh hey, these were here at exactly the same time. Um, they're the same species. How could this be? Um, so it, it's it's really neat because. <laughs> It's, it's just kind of, the, the thing that I enjoy about geology in general is that a lot of it is a puzzle and you're trying to put together, okay, we have this evidence, this evidence, and this evidence. What can it tell us? What it, when we put these things together, what do they say about our geologic history? Um, which is what I find very interesting. Keep picking me up for forgetting things, getting distracted and dry. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had I had some really bad math teachers. Really, really bad math teachers. Is it true that the Earth's core is just a theory? We don't actually know what is in the center because we can't make it that far. No. Uh, there's actually, which I think, what is it called? Um. There's different, what is it? P waves and S waves, I wanna say. Okay, so here's the way. So here's like, you can basically by using, um, basically, by using seismic waves, we can determine different things about the core. So we can just we can determine different things about um, the way it refracts and everything. Oh God, some of these diagrams are real weird. <laughs> um, there's like why why are there such potato quality things here? Where exactly are the lizard people sitting? <laughs> right, um, right here in the subduction zone. Exactly right there, but just there, Tam. Okay, that's where they live. Now you know. Posing <laughs> <clears throat> views on this. Well, I mean, like a lot of things are are hypotheses. The entire phylogenic tree is hypotheses. <laughs> that's kind of, you know, that's what the scientific method is. Um, so convection. Yeah, it does. Should dig into the mantle via the thinner oceanic crust. I mean, they were able to figure out that the universe is sort of a vague beige color. It's true. Am I playing in the Apex tourney? I don't know. I saw that. I was thinking about it. You'll let me know what the core... Oh, please do, Ranger. Please do. <laughs> Loving the cool jazz? Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. 
Um, but yeah, going back to this. So, you know, these are sort of ways that we can extrapolate um, the, you know, if we say this zone here and this zone here, we can reasonably conclude since they have the same fossils, the same species around the same time period, it's very likely that these were, uh, these continents were touching at this point in time. So let's see. Are you joining it, Emster? I don't know if I'd be very good at one-on-one -on -one if, <laughs> if I'm honest. What if it's all a simulation? Dude, I took a philosophy course my first semester of college and the brain in a vat theory had me mess up for a while. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what if, what if you're right? Oh my god. Oxygen, which is why we <laughs> True. <laughs> Proof enough for my brain? True, true. What if the universe was just like, oh, oh. what if it was? <laughs> Um, but going back, so I talked a little bit about plant fossils. So plant fossils is any preserved part of a plant. Crazy, I know. I, I bet you never would have guessed. <laughs> There's also macro and micro fossils, um, and they're often preserved as carbon. So I will find this for you. Hopefully there's a good, uh, diagram. Macro. Plant planey. Hopefully there's a good one. It it that's the the micro versus macro is like I mean this would be a macro. Micro would be more like um when you get into the paleobiology of it. So chemical traces, things like that, um, are sort of what you would look for more in the microfossils. I can't see a good <laughs> example right here could do this that's not necessarily gonna be yeah it's fine but yeah you can get fossils that are like this tiny too like these are microns wide it's very cool micropaleontology is neat <laughs> there's like all there it's it's really cool because there's so many things that you don't consider that can be found in the fossil record but um it's very neat it's very nice to have if I'm a brain of that, it was very nice to have hallucinated all of you. It was nice to have hallucinated you too, Scald. <laughs> hey, Nanaki! You're getting edumacated. How do you find a fossil that big? Uh, Like this? Oh, you mean the, the micro fossils? That's small? Is that what you meant? Typically, I, I I think you would find microfossils here. Let's see if they have a better answer for us. Because they're, they're typically found, like, in the proximity of macrofossils. And you would find them, you could find them in, like, sediment. Um, if you're looking at sedimentology, it seems that's unlikely to find unless there's millions of them together well there would be i mean there would be different factors that would that you would look at a fossil or um a strata of rock and be like hey there might be something in here we can look at the sediment we can um we can look at the the structures in it so i don't i'm struggling to say this without delving really deeply into like sedimentology and stuff which is kind of it's i kind of intended to be so stream but there's different indications that you could see microfossils so you might see um you might find a particular area in a layer of rock where you see a bunch of different fossils you're like hey i want to look at, take a closer look at that and then you may find these micro fossils there's there's 
a lot of different kinds of microfossils. Um, and that that's sort of right here where they break it into the different areas of study. So you can have like silicon dioxide, you can have chalk, which is sort of the, actually, I kind of want to show you Cochina now because it's really cool. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not what I wanted, but that's hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm just gonna do fossiliferous limestone instead. <laughs> oh my god. Is there, is there a good Pachina here? Uh, like this. This has a lot of different shells and stuff. So you might get like, um,. Oh, Coquina, that's why. Oh my god, I switch. Don't worry about it. <gasps> no! Not that. Next thing. <laughs> what is happening, please? <laughs> I didn't mean it. It wasn't me. So you can get stuff like this. Ooh, ooh lights are cool too. Wait, I can't get into this. This is sedimentology. I get very excited about sedimentology. I like paleontology, but I get very excited about sedimentology and geomorphology, especially geomorphology which will be other streams. Um, but anyway, so yeah, you might get like a really cool fossiliferous limestone that you take a further look at and you see a bunch of different, um, you know, microfossils as well. If you have macrofossils, you're probably gonna have some microfossils as well. Geomorphology stream when? I mean, if you guys are enjoying the stream and you want more, of these kinds of streams, then I can definitely do these more more of these kinds of streams. <laughs> well, you do like one or two a month or something. Um, girlfriend just had set class this last semester and I cannot explain my confusion with what homework she would have to do. <laughs> it's so cool. So much fun info. <gasps> I'm glad you're liking it. I'm really, really glad. I'm sorry, because I'm I'm struggling to stay in the lane of paleontology. <laughs> and also struggling to explain certain things in certain terms. Um, but what we can go into next is the geologic timescale, which we sort of touched before. Um, so there is sort of like an official... <laughs> I'm sorry, Cole, I'm trying. Um, there is sort of an official geologic timescale. Um, in this time scale is I wonder if let me see is there an interactive geologic time scale that's mm, not really what I wanted that's not what I wanted either Ugh, I don't want to shop for the perfect gift I already got them the heck oh well that's pretty cool except it doesn't really <laughs> it is cool it is cool though <laughs> had trouble with staying on topic too i know i know i i get excited um I can talk about, so it's sort of broken up into different parts of geologic time. And I'm just looking at this really quick. So how did they break this up? This, okay. So this is the official like geologic time scale, but I also added this picture on the right because it's like more cartoonish and easier to read. <laughs> For someone who doesn't quite know what all this is yet. So it's sort of like thinking through time, this is how we look at this. You're going to have older layers on the bottom, um, newer layers on top, basically. Um, there are obviously um, uh, exceptions to that when you have 
uh, full thrust belts. You can have an, an orogeny. <laughs> These are real geologic terms. <laughs> there's, um, there's all kinds of like different um, structural elements. Was it gonna be an abster? No, a fold, fold thrust. Fold thrust. <laughs> not, a, not a full thrust. <laughs> Ah, uh, geology terms. Um, but typically you would see older layers. Uh, layers on the bottom are older. Layers on the top are younger. Um, and then you have different uh, periods of time in geologic history are broken up into these. So there's the larger categories and then there's the subcategories here so there's like the there's the period the epoch and the age so you would have for example um we can do oh shatizi shaw thank you so much for the raid welcome welcome thank you so so much i really appreciate it I hope your stream was very good. Welcome, welcome. Um, <laughs> Hello, Shaw. How are you? This picture is making me sad. Sad. Uh, can I look at... Is this gonna let me... Okay, so this is a much clearer picture here. <gasps> You're late to science, it's okay. We're not done with science yet. All is well. All is well. So we have, we have our, our, our periods of time. Um, this is where we are right now in the Cenozoic. So we have the Quaternary is the period, the Epoch is the Holocene. Um, we don't really have an age for this current time because it's pretty small. <laughs> MA is millions of years. Uh, so 0 0.01 million years is, is what the Holocene is right now. It's basically, you know, ki ki kind of human existence. So, um, played Rayman Legends. Oh, nice. That's awesome. This looks too big brain for you. No, not at all. This is basically just, you know, through time. So you guys will probably recognize the Mesozoic. You've got the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. And this was, you know, um, uh, a lot of uh, dinosaurs were here. Um, when you get into the Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian, these are all... You, you see like a lot of, um, a lot of oceanic, like, like marine fossils from this time. Um, the Devonian was actually kind of the, kind of the Ordovician to Devonian were like the huge trilobite times. Like trilobites were huge then. It was great. Um, you had a lot of, um, in this you know, the Precambrian had a lot of um, bacteria, um, the eukaryotes, everything like that. Gotta go almost 3am. Thanks for helping with your decision on choosing your major. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed, Mirai. I'm glad you enjoyed. I hope you sleep very well. Thank you for hanging out. That's basically how the Earth buries the past in nice layers that we give weird names to. <laughs> yes. Essentially, yes. Um, so yeah. So that's sort of like a, a very basic uh, overview of this. So we would have, you know, um, our periods, our epochs, our ages. This gives you the millions of years that that was. Um, just a very basic understanding of how that works. 
Um, and I think if we go into like a sedimentology or something stream, we can talk about it a little bit more. Um, but it's very cool. Very, very cool indeed. Just want to write my bachelor's thesis on the way internet culture influences the English language. <laughs> That's kind of really cool though, Emster. That's really interesting. Um, the last thing I really wanted to bring up, and then I can answer your guys' other questions, um, are mass extinctions. So, I'm gonna do this. My Brian hurts now. In traps its heart. <laughs> your Brian hurts now. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Thank you for the 20 not like this bitties <laughs> squishy. Aw, oh, poor Brian. Poor Brian hurts. <laughs> the origin of poggers. <laughs> Amazing. Um So I'll go into these. Uh this is the this is another version of the geologic time scale, just sort of at the bottom here. Um it goes from the Cambrian all the way to the present. Um and there were there were five mass extinction events so the mass extinctions are basically when there's like an extreme percentage loss of uh species and i think it's 75 percent yeah 75% of animal species. So it's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, these were massive events. Um, I'm going to do a second bachelor's in communication science so I can just write about the linguistic properties of emotes. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Me and out spamming the chat bot. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Cassie, how are you? I can actually say this one up, nerds. It is. It's mass extinction time. So on the bottom again, we have Cambrian over on the left, present over on the right. Um, the th This axis over here is the number of Gina. Uh, Gina. Uh, b basically the number of different species. Uh, the genus. So you have like the abundance over time. Um, and then you can see these dips. Like these extreme dips. Especially this one here. Um, and uh, this one was insane. So the Ordovician Silurian extinction. Uh, I'm going to develop a weight loss system and call it mass extinctioning. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I believe the Ordovician Silurian extinction was like a... Uh, an oxygen carbon like a let me see abundant plant life removed carbon dioxide yes um so there was like this huge um ecological can i make the screen full size i can i can also just find this graphic again and bring it up bigger come on okay or not plus there we go. So now we have it a little bit larger. So we have, um, is there a reason for class or just wanting to gain more brain wrinkles? <laughs> well, people asked for a science stream. Like people have been asking for it for a while and I've wanted to do it for a while. So I just figured I would. And then I let people vote in the discord on what subject they would most like to um, explore. And paleontology was was chosen for this one, but we'll do like other other uh, other things as well. Um, but the first mass extinction was the Ordovician Silurian extinction, which was an eighty six percent loss of um, of uh, animal species in that time, which is insane. Like eighty six percent of if, of all animal species was lost, <laughs> which is crazy. The subscribe ad assumes that everyone who's here more than once is already subscribed. <laughs> so there was that event. There was also the late Devonian extinction, 
which was 75%. Um, there were, this was an algae bloom, which made the, it, it basically suffocated the unicorns. <laughs> yeah. That's when the unicorns were <laughs> right around there. Actually, no, I lied. The unicorns lived with the dinosaurs. <laughs> that's that's where they went extinct. It's a very sad day. <laughs> um, but they basically created like a um, an anaerobic environment and suffocated a lot of species. Um, some of the, I, I think both of these first two mass extinctions also uh, related to glaciation events. Um, the third mass extinction, which was the biggest mass extinction, and it, like, look at that drop. <laughs> it's insane. 96% of animal species went extinct. Um, which is crazy. Uh, like, that's, that's just 96% of all life on Earth at that point was gone. Um, there was a lot of volcanic activity, um, a lot of CO2. There were like, it, it was, it was insane. Like there were a lot of, a lot of, um, toxic, uh, what's the right word? Toxic, uh, chemicals in the air. Aliens biggest terraforming failure. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they did fail. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> Let's turn it off and on again. <laughs> it's a massive fart. Yeah, that's what happened. Massive fart and all life on Earth almost got wiped out. Um, but there were enormous, enormous amounts of uh, greenhouse gases and things. Um, uh, the fourth mass extinction was the Triassic Triassic. Uh, Triassic Jurassic extinction, which is kind of the one that you imagine uh, when it comes to like asteroids and stuff. That's this is the one, and I think it says it here too. Other scientists contend that an asteroid or comet impact triggered the extinction. This is this is the one that that you know is like the <laughs> the media personified version of a, of a mass extinction of the end of the dinosaurs <laughs> um, kind of thing. But this was another uh, volcanic you know, big volcanic event, which um, ways that we can see this sort of stuff in the fossil record um, or even in the um, yeah, there is a crater. There is a crater in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, which, interestingly enough, um, I, I've always meant to do a little bit more research on this, but, uh, there are gravitational anomalies there, which is interesting. Um, very subtle, but very cool. Um, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's very, very cool. Um, like, no, i so I'll stand there from now on. Wait. <laughs> I don't know if the same goes for asteroid squishy. <laughs> you might not want to rely on that thinking. <laughs> um, the last mass extinction. Um, G equals 10. <laughs> uh, that I'm not sure, Flomp. I just know about the gravitational anomalies. I don't know what they are. Um, I shall do a little bit more research. Take that with a grain of salt. Because as I said, I, I want to look more into it. Um, but yeah. Um, so the Cretaceous, uh, Paleogene extinction, which is the last extinction, uh, that we have on record. Oh, I remember what I was saying before. Let me go back to that thought really quick. How we can tell about, uh, different, um, like, um, you know, what the, what the air was like essentially millions of years ago and about these volcanic activity, um, how we can tell that they happened. Uh, you may have heard about, um, the sort of, uh, like the, the 
ice columns that they take out of, say, Antarctica. Um, they have air bubbles trapped inside them that scientists can then analyze to see, you know, what uh, the air was like, essentially, at that point of time, what the atmosphere was like. Um, in terms of volcanic activity, you can tell by the ash layers in the stratigraphic record, which is what those layers of rocks are. That's like the stratigraphic record. Stratigraphy. So it's really cool. It's really interesting. Um, and you can combine that with the fossils in the layers above and below it, and there's like all kinds of interesting things. Easy weight loss method. Go to low gravity place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Oh, very cool, Mr. House. Um, but yeah, so the Cretaceous uh, Paleogene extinction is what did finally wipe out um, the dinosaurs. <laughs> um, this was the smallest uh, mass extinction in terms of the percent loss of species, because it was only about 60% or 60 to 76% in this case. Uh, on this one, I always learned it as 60%, but, um, but yeah, so this was also, this is the one where the asteroid landed in the Yucatan Peninsula. So this is the one with the, the, the asteroid impact. A bookish reader. Thank you so much for the raid. How are you? Welcome, welcome. But the largest and coolness factor of the destroyed beasts. Oh, yeah. I, I bet they were very happy about it. <laughs> Thank you so much for the raid. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you had a good stream. S Snake in Woody's boot. <laughs> that is the greatest. Thank you for the follow. That's such a good name. Oh, crud butt. That's also a great name. <laughs> You're doing good. You're playing some Talos Principle. Oh, that's so good. Figure time for some learning. Oh, well, welcome in. Welcome in. Dude, I haven't played Talos Principle yet. Oh, this is the worst song. Hang on. I have to skip it. I hate that song. <laughs> I have not played the Talos Principle yet. I'm, I very, very much want to. I played The Witness and absolutely loved it uh, and intended to play Talos Principle after it. Um, being of a similar genre. But that sounds awesome. Yeah, we're learning about paleontology. Um, we're towards the end of it, but uh, we're going through mass extinctions right now. Yeah, it's the worst, I'm sorry. It's the worst. <laughs> so welcome in, welcome in. Um, I guess I'll give you a little introduction. I'm Firefly. Um, I am uh, a variety streamer. I have a master's in geology, and this is our very first science stream. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit more in the future, it looks like, because people seem to really like it. Um, but also, uh, we, um, play a lot of Apex, um, Sims, uh, we're going through Hades right now, a bunch of different games, so I do a lot of variety. That's fun. Yeah, I am, I'm sorry. I am. Someone suggested I play The Witness today. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, I've heard really, really good things about Talos Principle. I, I own it. <laughs> a friend of mine gifted it to me a while ago after I told him I played The Witness. Um, thank you so much for the follow, too. I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah. Maybe we'll do maybe we'll do that at some point in the in the near future. Because we're getting close to finishing Hades. So we can do that. Find a playlist and hide it. Whoa. Oh my god, I didn't know the Semster. I carefully curate all of my playlists. So I never have a use for that kind of a feature. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. I will look that up. Wait. I'm looking. I'm looking at it. I see. I see. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us on the witness have a lot of overlap in players and fans. Yeah. I've heard. Oh, Hades is so good. It's so good. 
I love it. I'll be honest, this graph looks like an extinction event is coming in soon. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to talk about this one. So um, there is, it, it's sort of like, it, it's, it's kind of a thing where we have a lot of species that are dying off at a rate that's higher than what a normal rate of extinction would be. Um, you have species that go extinct even without mass extinction events. That's just how it works. Um, but obviously humans didn't exist until the very, very recent um, time, geologically speaking. So there's a lot of human influence that goes into this. Um, and humans are unfortunately very negatively impacting the rate of uh, species extinction. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, so that's sort of what that means by that. It's not necessarily that it's a mass extinction event. Um, but I heard present will always be 1950, not now. Oh, I don't know. They are delusional. <laughs> Wait, what about what? Oh, <laughs> I see. I know humans. Of the mass extinction of oh oh oh, I yeah, I mean it, it in in the far far future if we are still around, um, because humans are not out of the uh, realm of possibility of being extinct, uh, it is possible that we will have caused a mass extinction event just from our influence on the earth. Which is very sad. <laughs> Ooh, Phoenix Rising. I've heard of that game. <gasps> cool. <laughs> All right, Bender. <laughs> Stink to the humans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do our best. Okay. So that was sort of the last slide. So do you guys have any other um, questions about paleontology? I know we've been going through these for like two hours. Tells <laughs> humans have advanced tools to adapt to survival. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely possible, Mr. House. Definitely. Why do people lick rocks? Uh, identification. <laughs> Genuinely. So um, <laughs> that's what <laughs> go, please. <laughs> Um, so if you look up halite, right? You got halite. You look up calcite. What? Why did it do that? So, okay. If you look up calcite, you look up halite. They look pretty damn similar, right? They look pretty damn similar. <laughs> you have licked rocks? Of course I have. I'm a geologist. <laughs> so one way you can tell um, is if you lick it. <laughs> if bison was dressed up as a rock, what would your reaction be? <laughs> Oh, yeah, so 
There are we can we can actually I can do a, a whole stream on like rock identification, rock and mineral identification and stuff. Um but yeah, there there's things called cleavage and fracture when looking at the uh the shape of a mineral. It's cleavage. Mr. Box Monkey, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate that. I hope you're doing well. They released an album called Phanerozoic. Their first single was a song about the Jurassic extinction. Any F's for the dinos? <laughs> That's amazing. Cole, what the heck? <laughs> Why you do this? <laughs> How dare. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the answer. <laughs> I mean, there are better ways to do it. There are, you know, uh, you can use hydrogen chloride to tell if you just like put a little bit of HCl and it fizzes, you can tell what it might be. If it's calcite, it's going to fizz. If it's quartz, it's not. Um, the other things used for mineral identification are like, uh, streak, luster, um, color, obviously, hardness. <laughs> what does Velociraptor taste like? Uh, victory. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. How to kill a geologist. Hold up something very, very deadly and tell them it's a rock and watch them look at <laughs> To be honest, the amount of beer geologists consume, the alcohol will probably kill whatever bacteria you give them. <laughs> People have done studies on why geologists like beer so much. <laughs> it's just a thing, you know? Like a sword? Amazing. Is bison a geologist? <laughs> no. You mean drinking is or something? Genuinely, my, um, one of my instru- one of my, uh, professors in undergrad used to, like, keep a flask of whiskey in his- in his filing cabinet. And he would just- he would just let us take shots with him sometimes. <laughs> like, it's just in the middle of the day. <laughs> Be like, man, I need a drink. <laughs> We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> we also made uh, glass sculptures when we'd go on geology field trips. We'd throw the... I say we. I didn't really drink. But, um, I don't really drink. Um, but... The people that did drink would toss their empties into the fire and eventually they'd melt down. And so we'd have like this glass sculpture that we would bring back with us from every single geology trip. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> they might still be there, I don't know. <laughs> it's been years. But it was a good time. Get smashed with their supervisors. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> First time on the stream, where did you get your geology degree? Um, I hesitate to answer that only because I don't want to dox myself. Um, but I got both my bachelor's and my master's degrees in New York State. Um, at colleges in New York State. But, um, yeah. It was a good time. Honestly, like, geology was a hard degree. Like, a very hard degree. Um, there's a lot of different disciplines. There's a lot of information you need to know. And it's not, like, it, it's, there's, there's just so much that goes into it. 
there's so much that goes into it. Um, uh, hard like a rock? Yeah, t totally. With all the beer drinking. Again, I don't really drink, and I didn't really drink in college, except for, like, the last year, but that was for reasons. Um, but, uh, the... You studied some basic geology in order to get your planetary science degree? Oh, nice, nice! Very cool. I, I, I considered going to planetary geology. I was, uh, learned about that earlier. <laughs> you told me stories. <laughs> Shh, don't talk to me. Um... That's very cool. It it is it is pretty tedious. It is it can it can be overwhelming. Um, there's a lot to it. So, for my mineralogy course, part of the final, and this was just part of the final, we had to um, learn. I think it was like close to 200 or something. I don't know if Kriegs are still here. Uh, maybe she can correct me. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of minerals. We had to learn all of them. Um, we had to learn what they were, their uh, chemical structures, um, how to identify them, um, their chemical compositions. We had to remember all of it. And that was just part of the final. <laughs> because then we had to talk about um, how they were formed. Um, and this was just one class. So like the classes that I took were, um, you know, Intro to Geology, I took Petrology, um, uh, Metamorphic and Igneous Petrology, Geomorphology, Structural Geology, um, uh, Data Analysis, Research and Techniques. Um, I took a course on, uh, well, Hydrogeology, obviously, we had to do. Um, uh, geomorphology, um, like so many things. Some store is selling avocado fries, which are essentially avocado wedges covered in panko. Oh, what? I don't know. That sounds like something Meow would probably like. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, sentimentology as well. Yeah, there's like a bunch. There's a bunch. So yeah. Any more paleo questions? Beck is panko. <laughs> it's like breadcrumbs. <laughs> Sounds wrong, made up by white people <laughs> in the early 40s. It really does, though. <laughs> Close that for now. I went. I can show you a cool place that I went. Um, do, do, do. Launch it. Launch it. Yeah, it's tasty. Okay, uh... Rainbow Basin. It was around here. I also went on a trip to the Mojave Desert and <laughs> we had to uh Oh, you've you've been to Earth? Amazing. It's your house. <laughs> you can see your house from here. Amazing. What? How do I What? Oh my god. Can I like I don't want that. We want to go to 3D. Um, okay. Where was the exact... It's Rainbow Basin Natural Area. Natural Area. I mean, it's kind of this whole thing. But it's very cool. Let's go around there. Where is this? This is Southern California. Rainbow Basin. So we're in Southern California. In the absolute middle of nowhere. <laughs> it was amazing. So I went on a trip here and we, um, we mapped this whole area. It was very cool. Is this my back garden? Yes. <laughs> Dead 
did it, Ko? Wait, can you get it? Oh, it's probably too late, isn't it? It's like 9.30. Heck. You can get it tomorrow, though, right? I'm excited. What tools do we use? Uh, well... Did we use mostly just our Brunton compasses? Which I can show you what that is. Um... Oops. Mostly just our compasses and, uh, like, sketching everything. Um, we also identified, you know, we we spent so much time. <laughs> we spent, like, two days or something in here. Um, just identifying the different rock layers and everything. Um, and sort of piecing together this valley. Um, it's basically a... It's a syncline, which I can get into in another uh, stream, but um, this is, this is sort of the big, uh, big piece of it. Like this is the syncline. This is what you see. And that's a fold, what we called a fold. So if you think of a flat piece of paper and you put your hands on either side and move them up you would make like a U shape and this type of U shape is syncline if it were an A shape it would be an anticline so this syncline is sort of what we mapped and you can see there's all these different rock layers all these different colors and everything so those are all different kinds of rocks with different chemical compositions that we went through and we figured out we mapped and um, we went to the other side of the basin as well <laughs> what does it taste like? <laughs> it tastes like, uh... I got nothing. <laughs> I was gonna... I was gonna make a smart-ass answer. I got nothing. <laughs> um, this was another portion of it, too. This is tough. T-U-F-F. -F. Rock type. So, yeah. Cool things. Cool things. Um... It was a pretty neat area. You've licked the rock. <laughs> ha ha have I though? <laughs> I don't recall doing this. <laughs> oh, I am <laughs> Um, but this is a Brunton compass. Um You can use it obviously for direction, you can use it for altitude, you can use it for strike and dip. Hey Boyd, how are you? Um So, um, the strike and the dip. So, this is sort of the angle of the layers of what you're looking at. Compass, a compass and a dip. <laughs> oh. Chris Danger, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. I hope you are doing well. In the 90s were kind of <laughs> It's true, go. So the 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 dip is sort of the angle that the rock layer is. It's it's so hard to describe without having like a physical thing, but it's basically like yeah, it's the dip for the rock. So it's like you can imagine a horizontal plane against the rock, and then it's the angle between that horizontal plane and the surface of the rock layer. This might be a better one, possibly. And then the strike line is the... So this, this is actually a good one, because it shows the horizontal layer. So the horizontal surface. And then you would have... You're 18 degrees, and that's your your um, angle between the horizontal layer, the horizontal surface, and the actual degree of the strata. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Am 
My previous supervisor was working on a geology degree, but when she had to do field studies, she has the worst sense of direction and could not map areas to save her life. Oh no! I loved mapping. I thought it was so freaking fun. <laughs> I thought it was great. I wonder what this will show. No, I don't like that. But yeah, basically. And then the strike is like the, the direction. The direction of the dip. That's pretty cool. Let's go gem mining. Let's do it. Let's heckin' do it. I've gone to a couple mineral mines. They're pretty cool. There's one in New Jersey with uh, a mineral called Wollastonite. Is it? No, I think it's Wollastonite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of neat because Wollastonite uh, fluoresces. Let me do... Oh, yeah, there we go. Fluorescent. So Wollastonite fluoresces. These are a bunch of different ones. Um, but there are some rocks that, because of their chemical co or their uh, mineral composition, fluoresce. And it looks really cool. When you play Minecraft, do you lick all the rocks in that? No. <laughs> do you like to find fluorescent minerals? Yeah, it's it's really, really cool. What is this song? I don't know. I'll skip it. I have no idea. I feel like I was whispering. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah. Sam, it's Ulexite. Ulexite. Oh, that is very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me me meta metaphysical healing properties on this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. You have a stress rock to lick in uncomfortable situations. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I can see. TV stone. When do I stream these science classes? Uh, this is actually the first one that I've done. Um... But we'll probably do like one or two a month. I play other games uh, most of the time. Um, this upcoming week, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break. Well, not not this this week, but next week. So after New Year's because of my work schedule. Um, unfortunately, I can't be around to stream as much that week. But the week after, we'll start again. Maybe we'll do maybe we'll do another one uh, that week after. But normally I stream about three to four times a week. We played a lot of different games. I might do Talos Principle now. <laughs> After we uh, finish Hades. Cole, how dare? <laughs> how dare? Being like, Miss Fly, is that a chewing gum? <laughs> no, sir, it's just a rock. <laughs> Amazing not stop which will destroy their kidneys Ooh, i will be careful ko actually got me one for christmas um but it shouldn't be anywhere where they can get it so hades i heard hades yes we'll uh we'll stream a little more hades at some point this week <gasps> whoa we hit 1100 followers guys that's huge that's massive. Thank you guys for all your support. What the heck? I just saw that. I refuse to answer any more licking questions. <laughs> they love my science. Man, I love science. I really do. 
Do you guys have any more paleo questions? This is kind of a groovy song. I like this. Oh my god, go! <laughs> Ever see the movie The Core? Yes. Uh, are there big crystal canyon? Uh, uh, kind of. Hang on. Um, where are, where is that one? There's a really famous one. Hey, Tink, how are you? What is the best dinosaur? Hang on. We'll do this one first. Um, crystal. Whoop. Quartz crystal cave. So there are these incredible caves. Um, some of them are, you know, you can just walk into them. Some of them are more like this, where you need specialized gear to go into them because of the, um, because of the, oh, it is Mexico. Okay. I was going to say Mexico, but I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to lead you astray. Um, but yeah, so these are, um, this cave is in Mexico. Um, but some of them are so hot that you have to wear specific uh, gear with like ice packs and stuff in it. Um, and you can only go in for a certain amount of time. Um, and they're really, really cool. They're very, very neat. Any 100% isolated from all life? Oh yeah, I'm sure there could. Caving stream. Dude, I've been caving. It's so cool. It's so cool. Okay, the best... The best dinosaur. The best dinosaur. Hmm. Are rocks supposed to be hot? I mean, heat and pressure. That's what you need for a lot of stuff to form. <laughs> the best dinosaur is bison? Aw, poor bison. <laughs> poor bison. Um, best dinosaur. I'm going to butcher this. There it is. Look at this little guy. He is so little. He's this little baby. That's the leg. That's a human leg. Look at this baby. Comsignathus. They're in the, uh, what? <laughs> they are very fast. Uh, they're in the second Jurassic Park, I think. They put them in Jurassic Park 2. Uh, but yeah, they are Yito. They're very small. Look at these babies. Oh, that's terrible. That's a terrible diagram. <laughs> They're cute little guys, though. Cute little babes. I used to watch this show. <laughs> it was like very, um, it was super cool, but probably not entirely accurate. <laughs> but it was called, um, uh, Jurassic Fight Club, <laughs> where they would dramatically recreate battles between, uh, dinosaurs based on the evidence on their bones. <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> you think you saw that? Yeah, I used to watch it with my college boyfriend. Uh, he was very into paleontology. It was great. <laughs> but yeah. So that's really all I have for you today for um, paleontology. Um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you do think of any other questions, definitely feel free to um, post them in the Discord. Um, and let me know. I, well, I guess what I'll do is I'll post the topics again. Um, if there's something from this stream that you'd like to go into more detail, because I intentionally left this pretty broad, um, so that if you guys had any thoughts on things that you wanted to learn more about within these sub-disciplines, you can let me know and I can go into those further. Um, we touched on, like, quite a few different disciplines as well today. Which is pretty cool, so, um, if you have any other questions, put them in the Discord and knowledge drop. Um, I will post a vote for the next science stream that we do, so that we can figure out what topic we want to tackle next. Um, and yeah, that's my story. So let us go find somebody to raid. Let's find a cutie to raid. Who do we have? Is it true that dinosaur ate rocks? No. <laughs> Wait, Subs is streaming? Is he actually? Wait a minute. What? Do I not follow him? Wait, is he actually? Wait, paste his, paste his thing in my in my in the chat. <laughs> what is his channel name? He changed it, right? So it's wait. Put, uh, paste his uh, paste his Twitch ID. We'll go raid him. I think it's Ga didn't he change it to Gary? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll get this. Oh, we changed it back. Okay, okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Underscore. 96. All right. <laughs> we'll go for the sauce then. Yep. It's definitely him. He's got the bow tie. <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much for hanging out today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the, the heckin' the, the resubs, the follows, the bits, the, the everything. You guys are amazing. And I love you all so, so much. Um, thank you uh, for hanging out, learning. Um, again, post your questions in the Discord. Um, I will answer them there and add them to the next um, science stream that we do. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Let's go show us up some love. I love you guys. Goodbye.